Nobody, 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 nobody. I have suffered a concussion and full body injuries <laughs> since the last time I sat down and filmed for you all. So if I am acting a bit different, if I am a little bit spacey, if I have some pain shoot through my body in the middle of filming, that is why. And why do I have a full body injury and concussion, may you ask? Because I climbed up a roof and then fell off of it on accident. Today we are doing my April wrap up and this is going to be late. It's gonna be late, I know it's gonna be late because I have already seen everybody else's wrap ups and made TBRs, but as you know, I have been bedridden because <laughs> of my clumsiness and hitting the concrete. If you listen to my podcast, The Lavender Menace, which you should, you would already know this, but for the rest of you who are not in the know, that is just a little life update for you. Also, I know in my thumbnail I'm wearing a green sweater, but I took it off before filming because I got warm. I got a little bit too stuffy, you know, so I'm sorry about the inconsistency there. Okay, <laughs> let's just get into the books now, shall we? So the first book I read in the month of April was Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. This book is a Jewish bisexual millennial hot girl mommy issue eating disorder book and I rated it four stars. <laughs> I thought that it was gross, explicit, sexual, and kind of nasty in all the best ways and I think that if you like Otessa Moshweg you should pick this book up and I think that the way that this book dealt with the issues of eating disorders and identity and getting into a weird relationship with the Froyo server girl and a weird relationship with your own body that is related to how you treat your own body and how other people perceive it. Very interesting, very phenomenal, and this makes me want to read Melissa Broder's other book, other novel, The Pisces, which I've also heard very interesting things about, so I enjoyed that. The next book I read in the month of April was The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. Me and Steffi from Perks of Steph did a live show, which is on my channel. You can watch it if you want. And I enjoyed this book. I rated it four stars. This was a very wild experience. We are following this trio of people and we're going back and forth in timelines. One timeline is this woman who is... These two women who are in a relationship with each other, they're both trans and they are, they just have weird kind of, they have a weird relation to, relationship to each other that's like kind of codependent. And then flash, flash forward like three years later, one of the women in this relationship has detransitioned and is now going by Ames. And Ames is now working at some company and he's get in a relationship with this woman named Katrina, I believe. And she's this annoying Asian boss of his and they are in a relationship that's kind of sexual and then she gets pregnant and then Ames is like okay you know what my ex-girlfriend the trans woman he was in a relationship with before he detransitioned she really wants to be a mother so we should involve her into this mothering of this unborn child it's a very weird relationship it's a very weird concept and the way that this book then explains so many things about the complexities of human relationships and motherhood and gender and sexuality and the desires that women have and the performance of gender and trans communities, so interesting. And this book is very clearly not written for a cis hetero audience. It's very much written for people who are involved in queer spaces and trans spaces. And I really appreciate it for that because Tori Peters very much said that that is what she um, wants, wanted this book to be. And I think it did a good job of that. And because it was pretty intellectually engaging while still having a very interesting plot and these characters that feel very developed and real and these really uncomfortable conversations that happened throughout the entirety of the story. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was a pretty good adult literary fiction 
book. So I said four stars. <laughs> The next book that I read in the month of April was These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. This is a young adult contemporary following teenage girls who are witches and who are ex-girlfriends. They broke up for a reason that we don't know from the very beginning of the story, but then they're at this school bonfire because they're like juniors and seniors and it's the bonfire and then something weird happens and then we find out that there might be a witch hunter in town and there's this coven of the witches and the two girls, our main character, the lesbian, and her ex-girlfriend are both in this coven, so it's like kind of a it's kind of an awkward Ako Taco situation going on there. And then there's also a new girl in town who our main character is kind of into. And her friend, her male friend from her like art class or whatever, tries to like ask her out, even though she's a lesbian, and she's like dude why and the guy benson is like oh your ex-girlfriend said i should and it's just a weird situation and this book is magical realism like there's elements of magic obviously throughout the entire plot and the entirety of the story but it's very much a YA contemporary like that is what it is first and foremost and because of that i rated it three stars like there were some annoying why contemporary things that would go on in this book that i was like yeah no i can't read this as an adult and be like i enjoy this to the degree that i would if i were still like i don't know you know in high school i thought it was fine and i thought it was like queer and sapphic and whatever and I don't know, like it was literally just fine. So I rated it three stars. <laughs> I also think that it tried to mishmash together tropes and genres in this weird way that didn't fully feel cohesive and coherent in some ways. So I don't know, that's probably just me though. The next book I read was The Seep by Hannah Porter. And this book is another queer Jewish <laughs> book that is set in a sci-fi kind of dystopian future but it's not really dystopian i guess basically we live in on we're set on earth where uh, the this alien entity called the seep has now like settled on and rearranged a lot of possibilities and structures of the earth i also talk about this book in my sapphic book recommendations video for lesbian visibility day slash week which you can watch if you haven't already and i read this book four stars when i read it this month i or last month because it's may now whoa uh and i thought it was fine i thought it was good i thought that it talked about a lot of relationships and and the ways that the world is and how it should be and how a better world or a worse world would look and the ways that relationships would operate under those and the world building was very light but still interesting kind of in the way that like pet by Aquake Amezi I have it right here oh kind of like how this book is and if you've read this it's also this like utopian world but the setting is not fully flushed out, but it's still, you kind of get the gist of it. The next book that I read in April was The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. This is like a novella, part of a longer series. I don't know. You can read it as a standalone, which is what I did. And I enjoyed this. I listened to this as an audiobook, as like a dramatized audiobook through Hoopla, which is a library app that you should get if you don't have it already. We're following this girl who is like a prisoner in the palace and she is a forger so she forges like art and stuff there's also like a magical element obviously because it's a fantasy book brandon sanderson writes fantasy and sci-fi so it's that and we are trying to follow her as she has to do the secret mission the secret project to forge the emperor's soul because he's like in a catatonic state after an attack so they're like, we'll let you live if you make make a piece of his soul back for him and fit it back in him. So she is like spending day and night trying to figure out how to do it, but she's also trying to plan her escape at the same time. And this book was so fun and fast paced and genius and well plotted and interesting, like all Brandon Sanderson books. I really enjoyed it. But because it was like a novella and because I wanted more, I rated it four stars. It's more of like a 4.5 because I really love this. 
And the next book that I read was also Brandon Sanderson, and that is Warbreaker. And this book was amazing. I loved it. I rated it five stars. It is a fantasy, and it's set in a universe where there are two kingdoms that used to be one, and they have like beef with each other <laughs> because they have very different religious ideas. One of them is very puritanical and against excessive consumption and and uh dramatics and the theatrics of life they're very much anti that they are very much like we need purity and, and whiteness in colors because in this world the world is controlled by breath which is also kind of incorporated with like color because when you have a lot of breath you can see colors and spirits and just things more vibrantly and souls you can like sense them but when you are low on breath like you you seem more dull and everything around you seems more dull and your perception is very dull and we are following these two princesses who are sisters and one of them gets sent to marry the god king of the other of the other like city to try to you know keep the peace and not bring about war because there are talks of war happening regardless and because this young princess gets sent over there uh she is very naive and doesn't know what the heck is going on because she wasn't the one who was supposed to be sent over there it was supposed to be her older sister who is very calm and collected and has been trained her whole life and been disciplined her whole life to be the wife of the god king so this like teenage girl who's a princess has to go to the god king and go into this court in this other city that she has no cultural familiarization with whatsoever and try to figure things out and try to broker peace between her kingdoms. But she's also really trapped to the confines of the palace because she is now considered like part of the holy deities. Because in this other city, they worship these gods, these gods that supposedly walk among them and who live in the palace and who have a lot of political control control and these gods are basically people who have been reincarnated they died and then they woke up again and was like i'm alive now and i am a god <laughs> and so the entire city and the entire culture and the entire religion centers around worshiping these gods so we are also following the perspective of one of the gods who is known to be like the fool of the courts he is the jester he is the clown and he is also He's also very intelligent. He's realizing that the things and the traditions that he's engaging in are kind of leading him into a direction of knowing something is going to happen, something bad. And on the other end of the story, another perspective we get is that the older sister is like, you know what, I need to save my younger sister from the clutches of the evil god king because she's been raised in the opposing kingdom thinking and being taught her whole life that you know this heathen other country and religious system that worships these like gods these false gods are like evil and bad and so she's like i need to free them from the cl i need to free my sister from my innocent little sister from their their evil clutches so she goes over to the city and tries to get involved in, in kind of the seedy underworld of that kingdom and we kind of follow the adventures of all these people and how they end up interconnecting in war breaking in being war breakers trying to not bring about war or bring about war it's such an intricate fantasy universe with a beautiful magical system that is so incredibly described and i just love this book so much i one of my favorite books of all time is the Mistborn series by brandon sanderson which where is it where are you this book, this series, probably my favorite fantasy series of all time. This book, though, like, it's basically on par. Like, I really enjoy it. But this is a standalone, so that's different. Like, the Mistborn trilogy is much more expansive than this universe, but this universe is still chef's kiss incredible. So, yeah, I rated this five stars, or more like 4.5 stars, but I ran it up on Goodreads. The next book I read was Waves by Ingrid Ingrid Chabert. She's a French author. <laughs> And this book was translated from French, I believe. And this is a graphic novel that deals with grief and a sapphic relationship and the beauty and sadness and joy of it. And I rated it five stars because it was just so beautiful. The art, the writing, everything was so gorgeous. But it's a graphic novel, so it was like really short. So, you know, I don't know. I kind of like cried while reading it, but that's 
that's on me. Uh, I really enjoyed this, and I heard only good things about this before I picked it up, so when I did, I went into it being like, whoa, that's crazy, and I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read was The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nivo, and I rated this book three stars because I did not really understand what was going on. <laughs> it has to do with, like, Vietnamese folklore and magic and storytelling, and our main character is a clerk, and they are speaking to this like rabbit like I it's like storytelling within storytelling and I thought it was interesting and the clerk is like non-binary like not a man not a woman because they are like part of the holy order it's a very queer sapphic book as is the second book that I read in this duology or series which was when the tiger came down the mountain which is the second book in the singing hills cycle which is what these books are from uh and this was also by nevo obviously and this book i liked it more because i understood what was going on more so in this one and i rated it four stars it's another storytelling within storytelling and it has to do with the cleric and there's these tigers that are also women who are also tigers who are also shapeshifters and also carnivorous and man-eating and like I, it was just very interesting i like this story i liked it so i rated it four stars next i read a comic and that is heavy vinyl number one by carly houston and i rated this book four stars or sorry i read this book five stars usually if i read a comic book i will probably rate it like four or five stars because i just love i love that medium i love that form i i, I just really like it okay so anyways this book is about it's like set in the 90s i think and it's these teenage girls who work at a vinyl store and it's just such good vibes because there's a secret fight club that we get introduced to at the end of this and that's what the story is ultimately about i think and i'm very excited to get through the rest of this comic series the next book i read was sarah land by sam cohen this is a collection of short stories all centering around main characters named sarah set in different time periods in different places in different like situations different jobs like it was really cool i liked it i read this for a vlog that you should watch if you haven't already and i rated it four stars i liked it and it's a good short story collection with some weird queer girl queer jewish girl literary fiction geniusness i liked it the next book I read also for the vlog was On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. This is a very sad, touching, heartfelt novel. And I talk about this in my vlog again, so watch that if you want more of my thoughts on this. But I rated it four stars. I understand why everyone loves it, but it's not quite for me. Like, it's not gonna stick with me the way that it stuck with so many other people, I feel. And the next book I read was Quick and Wild by guy new york and this was a collection of like erotic short stories i read this two stars i didn't really like it i just kind of picked it up on a whim because i needed something like quick and easy to like refresh my brain when i was in the middle of doing a reading vlog full of these literary fiction highbrow short stories and like diaspora poetry books so i guess it, it served its purpose there for like flushing my brain out and like kind of pumping out the brain cells <laughs> and i mean I don't know i wasn't really a fan of this i thought it was just fine i don't really read published erotica that often but this is not really convincing me to read more of it <laughs> and the next book i read in the month of april was the castle of truth and other revolutionary tales by herminia zuramudin this book was so good rated it five stars loved it so much it is a collection of fairy tales and short stories that are all socialist in nature and deal with workers liberation and overthrowing the bourgeoisie and the idle rich versus the working poor and i enjoyed this so much and i'm still doing my instagram live series of reading a couple of these short stories at night and people other other people seem to like it as well so this is a really good book and i really really liked it I also read this for the vlog. The next book I read in the month of April was The Divines by Ellie Eaton. This book was also one that I spoke about in my my sapphic favorite books video and wow I loved this so much. I don't understand why it has a low rating on Goodreads 
but I really, really enjoyed it. I read it at five stars. It blew me away in how it presented teenage girlhood and the ferocity and evilness that girls can have and the reflection um, went later in life when our main character, Jo, is in her 30s and married to this German dude and she's, you know, becoming a wife and mother and she's looking back on her experiences at this preppy boarding school for rich girls where they all called each other the divines they were all known as the divines and they had weird traditions and clicky little gossipy groups and alumni that went back for generations and their mother's mothers who went there and it just a very weird almost cultish like <laughs> situation that a lot of like preppy boarding schools get the vibe of and this book was just just so complicated i feel in its exploration of how people perceive themselves and how women perceive each other and how those dynamics and power dynamics play out and the animosity that can go on between people i just thought it was so good and unexpected and remarkable five stars. Next book I read in April was Home is Not a Country. Also read this for the vlog. Four stars. It's a young adult coming of age magical realism diaspora poetry book. And if you like Elizabeth Acevedo, you would like this book, so read it. I think it's about a Somali girl who is really wanting to be an alternate version of herself and her family because her dad died before she was born and her mother immigrated to the US alone. And it's just a very sad and magical story. And I rated it four stars. The next book I read was also for the reading vlog. And this was another short story collection, Girls of a Certain Age by Maria Edelman. And this book was very interesting, very weird. Lots of weird, nasty, queer girls again. And I rated it four stars. I just thought it was very interesting and quirky and unique and it kind of very much gave me the vibes of Sarah Land as well. So watch my vlog if you want more thoughts on this. Some of the short stories I obviously liked more than others, and some of them just like really stuck with me and others I just forgot about as soon as I read them. But that's the case for a lot of short story collections, but the ones that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed, which is why it deserves a four star from me. Okay, and the last book I read last month was Something is Killing the Children by James Tinian IV, I think. Yeah. Um, this book is amazing. It is so creepy and so terrifying and so gorgeous. So well done. And it really features a girl boss monster killer named Erica Slaughter. She's so cool and awesome. And there's also these kids who are all getting murdered in this town. No one knows what the hell is getting them, except Erica, who's there to go fucking kill these things. And uh, wow, I this is a reread, because I read this last year in like October, I think. But, you know, I finally got a physical copy, because I read the, I, the first time I read it, I read it on Scribd. But now, you know, I have a physical copy, and I really enjoyed it. This is the first volume, and I can't wait to get my hands on the second volume whenever it comes out. Or I don't know if it's out already. I don't think so. Because it just leaves you on so many cliffhangers that you're like, wow, I just, I just want to know what happens next. So this is, this is a five star for me. It's a perfect horror novel, in my opinion. Well, not even a novel. It's a perfect horror graphic novel. Perfect horror comic series, in my opinion. It's so bloody and violent and gruesome and scary. But not in a way that scares me. I just know that it's scary. <laughs> Love the spooky book. And that's the last book I read in the month of April. Let me do a count up and a round up of the books I read. So it looks like I read 18 books in April, which is pretty good for me, I think, especially considering the past few months I haven't been reaching that high of a number. So that's pretty good, I think. And three of those books were graphic novels or comic books, and four of those books were short story collections, two, three of them were novellas, and yeah, I think those are kind of my stats. So yeah, that's my wrap up for April. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan on reading any of these books if they're on your TBR. And if you have read these books, like what are your thoughts on them or which ones sound interesting to you? <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, friend me on Goodreads, etc. 
subscribe to my podcast and you know i'll see you in my next video bye